is now documentary and filmmaker uh, Jade Sacker and left-wing activist John Sullivan. Uh, John, you filmed this moment on, on your phone. Just can you describe what happened? Yeah, so uh, basically all the, the protesters kind of stormed to get into the chamber. We tried to get into like uh, the main entrance right when you walked down the hallway. Uh, but that being said, nobody was able to get in because there's two guards refusing to move. Um, so immediately after, they started breaking through the glass. Once they broke through the glass, they were using like flagpoles and whatever they had uh, to kind of bash through the windows. Welcome back, everybody. I know we're all capitalists here, so I'm sure you won't mind giving me just a moment to tell you about this special offer from healthwithdronetech.com. Research shows us that up to 50% of the US population makes New Year's resolutions, but fewer than 10% will keep them after the first few months. In fact, 27% will have given up on their goals in the first week. 31% will have given up in the first two weeks and just over half will survive the full month. One of my resolutions is feeling my best and looking my best. And I'll do that with Ageless Multi Collagen. Collagen uses proven ingredients that make my skin healthier and more supple, which gives it that youthful look. Plus, I feel so much more vibrant when I'm on it. It's going to give me the energy that I need to stick with all my resolutions this year. Just go to www.healthwithdronetech.com and get my favorite collagen for 51% off today so you can look and feel your absolute best. Or click the link in the video description or pinned comment. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. I'd laugh, but it's just not funny anymore. I mean, this is just outright gaslighting and lying to the American public to push an agenda. Euro Beznimov warned us that, you know, back in the 80s, that the Soviets were trying to ideologically subvert the United States. And he described that as being uh, an operation to mess with the American people's mind so badly that nobody knows what the truth is and nobody is able to come to any kind of logical, logical reasonable conclusion. And I say... You know, maybe it has been happening. Maybe the Russians have been doing it. But hell, our mass media and the Democrats are doing it, you know, all by themselves. So if you're not familiar, after the riots occurred, there were rumors starting to bubble around that there were BLM and Antifa people at the riots and actually instigating people. And, you know, it became this big thing that, oh, it was just these infiltrators who were there to incite a riot so that, you know, to make the Republicans look bad. Well, you know, I don't know how much of that is true. I mean, obviously, there are a bunch of right-wingers there that, you know, took part in violence. I will say that while it was a couple, maybe a hundred or maybe a little bit more than that, that took part in the violence uh, in the Capitol, uh, the, everybody else, the thousands and thousands of other people who were marching peacefully, uh, you know, they were the mostly peaceful group that the media is now just Anybody pretty much at this point that's voted Trump is now a Nazi or a white supremacist or a far right wing domestic terrorist. So in that environment, PolitiFact put out this fact check uh, titled says left wing activist John Sullivan incited the insurgents of the U.S. Capitol. And uh, they rate this mostly false. OK, so uh, if you got some tape, wrap it around your head because it's going to explode. So we'll just read the if your time is short portion here. John Sullivan, an activist from Utah, joined supporters of President Donald Trump who stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. He said he was trying to document what happened. And as you saw on that CNN uh, interview with Anderson Cooper, that's what he said. He was just there to film it. They're just there to make a documentary. There's no evidence, no evidence that Sullivan incited the insurgents alone amid a crowd of thousands. Okay, so they, they parse it a little bit there. There's no evidence that he incited it alone amid a crowd of thousands. Video he uploaded online shows his perspective as he filmed. Huh. It's funny that they mention that because we'll get to that later, especially saying there's no evidence. Sullivan denied any affiliation to the broad Antifa coalition, although he has posted regular hashtags on his Twitter accounts. There remains no legitimate evidence that the mob at the Capitol was infiltrated or led by Antifa activists in disguise. Okay, well, like I just said, I don't necessarily believe that the whole thing, you know, was led by, you know, it was some left-wing operation and the right just got duped into it. I think, you know, people were acting on their own largely. However, uh, to say that there's no, they keep, they say that multiple times, no evidence at all. And they parse it there uh, saying there's no evidence that he incited the insurgents alone knows how they throw that in there. However, too bad for PolitiFact, he just was arrested. 
Left-wing activist charged in Capitol riot after saying he was just there to document. Well, that's weird because PolitiFact just said there's no evidence of that. There's no reason that you could ever suspect that. Now, of course, you know, they parsed it by saying, oh, there's no evidence that Antifa or BLM led this, and there's no evidence that he alone incited a riot. Of course, you know, the whole point, you're just supposed to read that headline, maybe just browse through real quick, and your general takeaway is supposed to be, this guy had nothing to do with it. It's all right-wing conspiracy theory, which is the narrative. Sullivan can allegedly be heard egging on protest in the video he provided to the FBI, according to a federal criminal complaint. He has also shared the video to his YouTube and Twitter accounts under the pseudonym Jaden X. Again, I'm I'm confused because this PolitiFact article says there's no evidence of that. No evidence. Who is this guy? Bill McCarthy. How did he get his job? What if you're a fact checker at PolitiFact and your fact checks are actually used over at Facebook um, to, to censor people's posts? What evidence, or like what research did this guy do? Clearly none if these videos are posted on YouTube and he knows who the guy is. He clearly did zero research into this before declaring it mostly false, which we all know, all of us know that that's how this works. I mean, you even have Yamanchi who uh, is over at PBS, another, another one of these left-wing radicals over at PBS, you know, one just got fired because he was talking about putting Trump supporters in uh, re-education camps, which I have a feeling this woman uh, would not be against, but she's with PBS, she's with NBC and MSNBC and the New York Times, uh, formerly New York Times and USA Today. But she also came out and said, there's no evidence BLM or Antifa took part in the attack on the Capitol. Well, there is evidence. She's just ignoring it. So there's a guy named Max Blumenthal. You're probably aware of him. He's the editor over at the Gray Zone News and uh, co-host of The Moderate Rebels. Um, he did some digging into this. And while I think he's carrying a lot of water, he's treading lightly, he's trying to be a moderate, um, you know, and doing that, He's holding, you know, the right to standards that BLM isn't, and he's kind of enforcing that, but he at least did some investigative work. Max Blumenthal says this, I studied video shot by Sullivan, Jaden X, in the Capitol and compiled some moments of him zealously celebrating the invasion and instigating the mob all the way up to Ashley Babbitt shooting. <laughs> so literally the guy took video of himself instigating the mob, but... Mr. Uh, highly paid uh, fact checker over at PolitiFact and Facebook, Bill McCarthy, was apparently unable to find any of this. He he apparently knew nothing about it. Oh, shit. We, we did this shit together. Fuck that. Yeah. Let's go, you guys are savage. Let's go. That's Sullivan talking. Let's fucking go. Holy shit. You have to come with us now. Give me, a, give me your hand, bro. He's helping people out, saying they're savage. Oh, let's do it. We gotta, we gotta burn the, we gotta get this shit burned. We gotta burn it? He just said we gotta burn it. Oh my god, we did this shit. We, we did took this. this shit. What's up, bro? No fuck evidence. Yeah, fuck yeah. No fuck evidence. We did this shit. Okay, bye bye. Punch in the window. <laughs> Well, they already broke the window, so, you know, I didn't... The person I told him not to do that, I believe, was that girl um, that was on uh, CNN with him, with Anderson Cooper. Headed that hard. Yeah, no one got that on camera. <laughs> no one got that on camera. Do not, do not deface the statues. I, res I, I, can, I can respect the set. Well, people might burn this down, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so that's a Trump supporter stopping this guy from defacing statues. And then he says, we might burn this down. This is the guy that Anderson Cooper interviewed, ran cover for, and presented as just a just a, a guy filming, a journalist. So it might be too late for that. Why don't we go in there? That's what I'm saying, Rick, that shit. Damn, it would be fire if somebody had like a boombox or something. Revolutionary music and shit. Let me do, I got a knife. I got a, I got a He's knife. He's got a knife, he says. I got, I got a He's knife. Oh, this is where she's... I see okay. people... Okay, so I don't want to go into this. This is where Ashley Babbitt is shot. So you can see he's there uh, instigating right then. He at least played a part in Ashley Babbitt being shot. I wonder if he'll be charged in that. I'm going to skip that part. I don't, I don't want to see it. <laughs> I do want to also mention that there are some rumors swirling around out there. Not even really rumors. Uh, there's supposedly this information from Sullivan's brother, James, saying that he's working with the FBI to expose... Uh, 226 members of Antifa that were there for the express purposes of starting a riot. Now, I don't know if that's true. 
If the FBI is uh, investigating it, we should find out here pretty soon. Uh, but I did want to throw that out there because there's actually um, also some logs out there from a Discord that I guess he posts on, or it's his Discord, uh, where they're talking and planning about turning the Trump rally into a violent riot. Remember, you know, in that video, they're actually saying, oh, we did it, we did it. So we did what? And they, it seems like there was a plan, and Sullivan's brother says that there was. So we have to wait and see where that goes. <laughs> So then comes in the question, was he a BLM member or an Antifa member? Well, if, if you start reading through here, you're going to see that, you know, they're going to start trying to separate this guy from BLM or Antifa. And there's like, oh, no, he, he was actually kicked out of the group. They actually contacted his brother, supposedly, and uh, tried to get him to help with getting him to stop coming to BLM rallies. And the only thing I'll say about this is it, it's an unfair standard. OK, uh, it, it wouldn't matter if some Proud Boy got kicked out and done and went and did something, they would still connect to the Proud Boy. We already know this because uh, back during the tea parties, that sort of thing happened. Uh, people would get kicked out of the tea party, go and get into a fight or do something bad, and they would connect it to them. And let's let's be real. Anytime the media can connect anything negative to their political opposition, they do. It doesn't matter if it was one person out of 5,000. You know, they'll connect it to, to the entire movement. So I kind of dismiss this. They did the exact same thing uh, when that BLM guy ambushed those five cops and, and shot them, killed them. Uh, the media instantly went out there and tried to separate him from BLM. You know, except, of course, BLM was it was at a BLM rally that was calling for violence against police. The fact of the matter is he did subscribe to that ideology. He was radicalized by the rhetoric coming from the media. Uh, from BLM and from Antifa. That's just the fact of the matter. And if all these roles were, were reversed, the media, you know, we would not be held to that same standard. According to James, John Sullivan rad was radicalized by the death of George Floyd, which actually means he was radicalized by the media and the Democrats. Okay, because a month prior, there was a white guy who was killed by police in the exact same way. That wasn't even a news story. But maybe if the media had reported that along, maybe alongside of it, to show, hey, Maybe it's not a racial thing. Maybe this is just police need better training. You know, they could have done that to kind of quell things, but they didn't. They really ramped it up. His brother goes on to say, and they say he's a member of a right-wing organization, confirms that BLM activists were trying to get John out of their circles. But again, I, that doesn't matter to me because this guy was radicalized by all these groups who are pointing the finger at their political opposition and trying to shut down their ability to have a voice, you know, based on violence from a tiny fringe minority. This is the last part of this article that I want to read because it's the most damning part. But it says that John Sullivan knew that people were considering storming the Capitol, and that's why he was there. But according to Jade Sacker, that's the woman who was on uh, Anderson Cooper with him, uh, who appeared on CNN with John Sullivan, he knew that people were going to storm the Capitol. Sacker also conceded that his ultimate agenda is inciting as much chaos as possible. So this is the woman that went on, again, Anderson Cooper, national media with him, is admitting that his agenda is inciting chaos. He's just angry, and he says it a lot in his, of his videos. F the system, burn it down. He doesn't think it can be reformed. Like, he kind of wants a civil war. He wants to be a bit of a provocateur and wants to dismantle the system and believes in the value of civil disobedience. And I also want to go into this a little bit over at the Gray Zone website. This is uh, Max Blumenthal's website and his article on this entire thing. About midway through, he says this, despite the overwhelming presence of far right and openly white nationalist activists at the Capitol, there might have been some, but it wasn't all of them. And again, it's like they have this standard that they that they use against the right. But they never even like consider to use that on themselves. It's it's just weird. But he goes on the right wing has exploited Sullivan's presence to blame the left for the catastrophe that Trump inspired. I again that is totally debatable. Trump said be peaceful and make your voices heard. That's what he said. He didn't tell anybody to go uh, invade the Capitol. He never said that. So that's a lie. But a recent data for a progress Vox poll showed that the right's narrative has broken through. 47% of Americans and 68% of Republicans holding Antifa responsible for inciting the violence at the U.S. Capitol. Okay, well, what do you expect? Because what happened all summer after BLM riots? Well, the media tried to paint them all as violence that was, was started by right-wingers. I mean, just go down the list here. ABC News. Turning point. Black Lives Matter organizers say right-wing uh, provocateurs started the violence. Who caused the violence at protests? It wasn't Antifa at the Washington Post. AP finds most arrested in the protests aren't leftist radicals. I mean, it's just over and over. Right-wing provocateurs continue to provoke violence at BLM. So it's like no matter what, no matter what, these people always have a fallback position in the media. The media will always switch 
the standards around to suit them always. You know, and I'd also like to just point out that this fake fact check from PolitiFact reminds me of a lot of other fake fact checks that I've been seeing recently. And there's so many of them, I'm forgetting tons of them, but there's a couple that are fresh in my mind. And one of them is this, did a convicted terrorist sit on the board of a BLM funding body? I sought this out because I saw this meme um, on my Discord server saying, in 1983, a far left communist terrorist group actually bombed the US Capitol building. Susan Rosenberg was arrested with a cache of explosives of 1984 and sentenced to 58 years in prison for the attack. Bill Clinton commuted her sentence in 2001, not surprising. Susan Rosenberg now sits on the board of Black Lives Matter. It says what here, here, what's true? Rosenberg has served as vice chair of the board of directors for Thousand Currents, which I just said. She was an active member of a revolutionary left-wing movement whose illegal activities included bombing U.S. government buildings and committing armed robberies. So, okay, that seems again like that's what the claim is. Well, what's undetermined? Get this. In the absence of a single universally agreed on definition of terrorism, First, uh, it is a matter of subjective determination as to whether the action of Rosenberg was convicted and imprisoned. So it's not subjective. She was convicted and imprisoned. Possession of weapons and hundreds of pounds of explosives should be described as an act of domestic terrorism. I mean, that is just, I, I don't even know what to say about that. It's just so obtuse, so purposely obtuse. It's filled with lies. First of all, there is no absence of a single universally agreed upon definition of terrorism. Uh, there is, and it is, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims, which is what everyone knows it is. This is not like some big mystery. And then they say that it's a matter of subjective determination as to whether the actions for which Rosenberg was convicted and imprisoned, like it's not subjective determination. You just admitted that she was convicted. So that's not subjective. And all you have to do is replace that with right wing. And do you think that Snopes or any news outlet would be parsing it like this? Of course not. This is another fact check that I was posting about on my Twitter before they suspended me for no reason. But it was a fact check from USA Today, one of many others like it, saying that Jacob Blake did not brandish a knife or get a gun before the Kenosha police shooting shootings. And that's what it determines. It determines that that was false to claim that he brandished a knife. And then five months later, the police, there's no charges, and we find out he did have a knife, and he did attack police with it. And then you read the editor's note here that was added five months later, and then it says that prosecutors revealed that Jacob Blake was armed with a razor-type knife when he was shot by police. This was not revealed. Everybody knew this. So just get on Google and look up Jacob Blake knife. You're going to see the pictures. Everybody, those pictures were everywhere, clearly showing him with a knife. But... These people, they just ignored that. Or, you know, Eric Litke or whatever his name is, is just in such a bubble that he never even knew about that. So it's just this pattern here with these fact checkers not being at all informed. They're very misinformed because they're clearly just partisans that live in a bubble. Well, folks, that's all I can take of that. Uh, make sure to look in the description and pin comment for all the other platforms that you can follow me on just in case something happens around here. If you want to support this channel, you can find all those links there as well. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out and I'll see you next video.